And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm going to be reviewing a game, the My Little Pony Collectible Card Game. Now, I'm going to be reviewing this game twice. This is the first review, which is just going to be me. I'm going to be looking at it from a gamer standpoint. What is the game like? I'll be doing another review in a week or so with my daughter, and then we're going to look at it and what it's like to play it in that situation, father and daughter, because I think it's a different perspective than just me looking at it as a straight game. Because I am not a My Little Pony fan. I'm not a My Little Pony hater. It's just that... I look at the cartoon with my girls and it seems like it's something for them and it has nothing that I'm interested in. So the theme doesn't do anything for me. In fact, it kind of detracts from me to sit around my friend and be playing ponies and friends and solve problems. Just seems like an odd theme. So I want to look at this from a gameplay perspective. But before we do that, let's take a look at how the game plays. You have these sheets that come in the starter decks that I never really like playing on a sheet, especially you can see how wrinkled up they get. But the two sheets, uh, each player brings one and places it so that you're going up against your opponent. You're going to, ha and if you buy a starter deck, for example, if you buy this starter deck, this theme deck, which is Twilight, Sparkle, and Applejack, you will get two characters here. We have. Twilight Sparkle and Applejack, and you need to pick one of these to start with. They, they're easy to find because they are double-sided cards. They have a, like a, basically an upgraded version of the, that person. So you're going to pick one of them to play as your deck. And I, I was surprised because I got a whole box of boosters and I didn't find any more of them. So apparently the only way to get them is in the starter deck. So you can make a deck of multicolors. In fact, you have to. There's uh, different colors here. You can see there's purple, white, orange, blue, yellow, and pink. But you have to have a starting person. So, for example, if this is the only starting deck you have, then your deck can be... Uh, purple and something or orange and something so you don't but you can even have a tricolor deck etc but you need at least two colors so you start with this person here uh, your starting person in your home zone players are going to get a handful of cards and then one person is going to go first now on a player's turn uh, they're going to be trying to solve problems in the middle of the table each person is going to have a deck of problems these problems are going to, uh, one is going to be your deck and the other is going to be your opponent deck. Now, when you are solving a problem, let's flip this one around. If, if this was me trying to solve this problem, I would need to have ponies or friends, they're called in this game, that have a strength of two blue plus two that are not blue to solve this problem. Now, that's what my opponent needs to get. For me, I just need any ponies, friends, that have a, com a strength or a problem-solving number of four or higher. So over here at this one, you can see I need two white and one non-white, and my opponent needs four of any color to solve that. And they will change as time goes by. So after I draw my card, I then have, um, I will, if I have any cards that are exhausted, or as everyone says, tapped, I will unexhaust them or ready them, untap them, and then I'm going to play cards or take actions. Now, the number of actions that a player has in their turn depends on whichever player has more points. You use a slider scorecard. So, if at the beginning of the game you have two actions on your turn, but if someone has 12 points, you'll have five actions on your turn. And you will use these actions to do different things. You can, for lack of better word, summon other characters onto the board. Like, let's say I want to summon Comet Tail here. He costs, up here, he costs one to summon on the board. Uh, if I wanted to summon this person here, Noteworthy, they cost one. If I wanted to summon Mint Julep, she would cost two. But another thing about her, you'll notice that you need at least cards with two purple strength on the board. So I could not play her if all I had on the board was Twilight Struggle. But if I had played Comet Tail first, then I could play Mint Julep, and then I would have be able to, because I would have the two. Now, when you play these people, you can play them into your home area, but likely you're going to play them to a problem. And the reason you're going to do that is because you're going to be trying to solve that problem. 
Once you have enough stuff to solve a problem at the end of your turn, in this instance you can see here that I have two gray and at least one non-gray. I have two purple there. So I would solve this problem. The first person to solve a problem gets a bonus point and you can keep track of points with any tokens you want and then you also get a point for solving the problem. Some problems that are harder to do might give more bonus points. For example, this Hungry Hungry Caterpillars has a bonus of two and that only goes to the first person to solve it. If my opponent had gotten four of any color to that problem before I did, then he would have solved it first and he would score the bonus point. Now I'm going to score a point for this card every turn until my opponent gets enough ponies to solve it himself. I guess we're trying to jointly solve the problem. Once he has ponies on his side solving the problem, let's say for example he manages to get uh, drill bit and jet stream over on his side and so they have a total of five strength and all you needed was four to solve this one. I look at my problem solving and I have one, two, three, four so I have four, so we're both solving the problem now. We then at that point have kind of a face-off. What each person does is they draw the top card from their deck. So my opponent draws it and he has a one strength. I draw the top card and I have a one. One plus four is five. One plus five is six. My opponent wins and he gets a point. He gets the bonus point again for winning that problem. The problem is discarded. We add a new one. Well, that's not a problem. Neither is that one. Here's a new problem. And then all the ponies come back home. Although each player, when they bring their ponies back home, has to look at their home limit. So some cards may have to come back in your hand. You can see here that Twilight Sparkle gives me a home limit of three. If I do something, each pony has a different way to flip them. If I can flip her later on, I have a home limit of four and also give her special abilities. So that's kind of the game in a nutshell. You're trying to attack the two different problems with your people and you're trying to solve them and win these face-offs, which gives you points as time goes by. There's other things that the game involves. There is troublemaker cards. You can put a troublemaker card on your opponent's deck and they would have to beat this troublemaker. They can't score any points till they do so, and they have, it also causes them some annoyance. If they do beat the troublemaker, they will get points. So you have to decide whether that's worth it or not. There's also things that you can play on other ponies. For example, this too much pie here, I can play on any friend, which means pony. It's kind of confusing when you're playing it on your opponent's pony. And then that friend is minus five power during the score phase. There are cards that you can play that are kind of actions or reactions. For example here, this Whoa Nelly card basically says, play when one of your friends has been dismissed, put it into your hand. And so there's different things. You can make ponies afraid, which will flip them upside down. And then you, you would have to wait to your next turn before you flip them back up. And you're maneuvering ponies around, trying to score. If I control both problems, that means I'm getting two points every turn, and the game only goes to 15 points. First to 15 points is the winner. There are rules about building decks, and there are other different rules, but that's kind of a basic overview of how the game works. Now, I experimented with deck building in this game. I went through, like I said, with a booster box, and we went through and looked at the different cards and stuck the cards in the decks and tried different colors. And there's obviously different things to think about. You want to have ponies that don't need any prerequisites to get out. You know, the, the better ponies might need three blue to get out on the table, but it, you need to get some guys who give you blue first. So you need blue ponies in your deck that, get, that are basically free to put out. It just costs an action or two. I do think uh, and when some cards you put in your deck, they're not very powerful, but they have high power numbers on them so that when you flip them in a face-off, you can win that face-off much more easily. And that's the cool concept that was out in the Star Wars collectible card game a long time ago with their deck of destiny. Uh, I, I do think that maneuvering around and trying to control it, I mean, this game could honestly have been totally rethemed where there was two wars and you were sending people out to fight. The whole friend solving problem theme actually doesn't make perfect sense. I understand that you're trying to solve a problem, great. But then you both are solving a problem and we solved it better than you. That doesn't fit as well and actually doesn't jive with what I've seen of the show where it's not like, you know, we're better problem solvers so we win. That, I mean, that might happen, but that's not a good thing, but be that as may. The artwork on the cards and everything is very much like the show. There are foil cards in there. There are rare cards. And from what I can tell, the rare cards are better than the other rare cards. 
The rule book is abysmal. I, I didn't understand the game at all after reading the rule book and I had to go online and watch some tutorial videos and then it kind of went together and once I understood the rules and I looked at the the sheet of cards here and said oh well that makes sense yeah that makes sense too I, I understand how that works and so where does this leave me with the game well like I said the, the game is a, is, is a pretty solid game where you draw cards and play them. It, it's a riff off the whole collectible card magic type thing where there's different colors. But the colors don't seem to have any kind of, well, oranges do this and blues do this. They just kind of seem to be based around a specific pony like oranges, apple, jack, and, and instead of having more of a theme like magic, white is healing and black is death, etc. I don't sense it as much here. Building a deck is, is important and you got to figure out how many troublemakers to put in my deck? What kind of troublemakers to put in my deck to annoy my opponent? How many friends do I want to put in my deck? And you don't have to worry about resource cards, so that's nice. Uh, and it's not so hard, I think, in this game to build a deck. Although I'll probably never get into competitive scenes, so I won't be able to, to give you anything on that. The game for me, taking the theme out completely, is decent. I would give it a 6 out of 10. The theme actually would subtract one from that, making this a five for me because I just don't want to go around and play a My Little Pony game. But like I said, come back in a couple weeks and see my review of Melody and see how that works for someone who actually does enjoy the show and is a fan of the show. We'll see how the game works in that setting. I don't think this is a bad game by any means. I don't think this is just a, a ripoff of the license. I think that they tried hard to put a good game in here. Uh, and while I don't agree with all the design decisions, I think that it's fairly solid. And I'm curious to see if this will still be around in a year or two. I suspect not because CCGs have a notoriously short shelf life. But anyway, that's My Little Pony CCG. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Listen, shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.